Increased pressure can have some significant effects on the human body, and this is especially important to people who dive. If you go scuba diving, and scuba, incidentally, let's talk about that word for just a moment, S-C-U-B-A, this is an acronym, and it stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. So exactly what you think those words mean is what it is. It's a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus and you've seen pictures of scuba divers or maybe you've done some scuba diving yourself and you've got the big tank on your back and then a hose running from the tank over to your face mask and there's the device called a regulator which uh, regulates the flow of air from the tank into your lungs so you can breathe underwater and you can dive down and you can go down pretty deep deep is like a hundred feet or more um, if you go down to 200 feet, that's considered a very deep dive. And people do do some dives over 200 feet. But you don't go much deeper than that ever just with a scuba tank. Now, you can get down very, very deep with a submarine or a submersible, a submersible device that's designed to withstand this huge pressure at great depths. But in scuba diving, you're only going to go down to 100 or 200 feet because something happens in your body if you're exposed to this high pressure. The deeper you go, the more water there is on top of you pressing down, so the greater the pressure is, and it has an effect on your body. And specifically what happens is gases dissolve in your lungs, in, in your blood. Gases, and specifically the air that you breathe, dissolves in your blood. The air that you breathe is about 20% oxygen, and it's mostly nitrogen. And the gas dissolves in your blood. You can think of it as like a, a two-liter soft drink. If you imagine, say, here's a Coke bottle. And it's never filled all the way to the top, right? It's, um, there might be Coke up here, and so this thing is, is full of some kind of soda. And the cap is on here, fastened down real tight. And in here, in this space right in here, there's some air, and it's under pressure. And when you unscrew the cap, you hear that air it comes squirting out and then something happens after that bubbles start to form down inside here and they float to the surface and if you watch closely it just appears as if the bubbles are coming out of nowhere they're just appearing in the liquid and floating to the surface and those bubbles are there because gas and in, in this case in the case of the soft drink it's carbon dioxide gas dissolved in the liquid. And it might sound kind of strange that gas can dissolve in a liquid, but it can. Just like sugar can dissolve in water, so can carbon dioxide. And so gases dissolve in the coke. And the amount of carbon dioxide that can dissolve in the soft drink depends on the pressure. Under greater pressure, more carbon dioxide can be kept in solution. And that's why when you reduce the pressure, when you open the coke, and let the high pressure air out of this top region. That's why under lower pressure not as much gas can stay dissolved and that's why the bubbles start to come to the surface. They, the gas starts to come out of solution and bubbles form and rise to the surface. Now the same thing goes on in the blood of the person scuba diving. As they go down deep under high pressure gases dissolve in the blood. The air that they breathe actually dissolves in the blood and under higher pressure more gases dissolve in the blood. And that's a bit of a problem. They can experience something called nitrogen narcosis. The nitrogen in the air that they breathe dissolves in the blood and it begins to affect their ability to think clearly. And when you're diving, especially if you're in a dangerous situation, say you're exploring a wreck or exploring a cave, you might be in a situation where stirring up the water could stir up all kinds of dirt and debris and cause an immediate loss of visibility, or there might be some, um, some dangerous objects around or some tight spaces, and you might lose your orientation. It can be very dark down there. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong, all kinds of hazards, and you need to be able to think clearly, especially if you need to get out of a situation. So if, if nitrogen dissolved in your blood has an effect on your ability to think clearly, that's clearly a concern to divers. So they actually don't breathe ordinary air. They breathe a mixture of other gases called trimix, and it obviously contains some oxygen. 
but it, it's um it's gases that don't tend to dissolve as easily in the blood so that helps them with that issue but the the more important factor happens when the diver starts to come back to the surface when he goes from the bottom back up to the top he's entering an area of lower pressure he's going down from this region of high pressure up here toward the surface to this region of lower pressure and as as the pressure decreases the gases that are dissolved in his blood begin to come out of solution just like the gases in the coke begin to come out of solution when you decrease the pressure on the top of the coke so gases in his blood start to come out of solution he gets bubbles the diver gets bubbles in his blood it can be very very dangerous it causes a sickness called the called the bends and it's called the bends because people who experience this tend to be in pain and they're bent over. It's uh, real painful in their joints and muscles. So it's called the bends because the people are bent. But it can, it can cause serious damage. It can cause a paralysis that can be permanent and it can be fatal. If a diver goes straight from 100 or 200 feet straight up to the surface, it can be fatal. In, in the next 20 or 30 minutes, the guy is likely to die from this. Bubbles in the bloodstream can stop the heart from beating and can cause other problems but it can easily be fatal and plenty of people have died from exactly this. When a diver comes back to the surface, the trick is to come up very slowly. As the bubbles come out of solution in the blood, your body has the ability to process those bubbles. Just like just like um, something you eat, your body processes that, so to speak. Uh, your body deals with it. You could, you could eat five Snickers bars. It's not necessarily going to be good for you but your body can deal with that and you process that, you digest it. And in the same way, getting bubbles in your bloodstream isn't good for you, but your body can handle it and can process those if they're in small quantities and if they're small. So if the divers come up slowly, then the bubbles remain very tiny and the body can handle it. If they, if they come up too fast, that's when they, when they get too much gases coming out of solution in their blood too quickly and they, they run into... Um, the, the bends. They end up getting the bends. So divers that are diving always uh, carry a watch with them and they're aware of how long they have been down and how much time they need to make a slow ascent to allow their body to deal with the bubbles forming due to the decompression. So divers are always consulting their watch. They need to make sure that they have enough air in their tank, not just to last them for their little trip down and their exploration down on the bottom, but also for a slow, gradual ascent back to the surface.